Hey everybody, what's up y'all? Welcome back to my channel, Tammy Talks here. Let's talk the final couple of the night. Married at First Sight, Season 15, San Diego, Episode 13, The Ugly Truths. For those of you that are brand new to my channel, I do breakdowns on various TV shows, both scripted and reality, interjecting my own thoughts, opinions, and theories into each and every recap. So, if you enjoy that type of content, please consider subscribing to the channel, thumbs up the video, hopping in the comment section, all that good stuff um a huge thank you to eileen for the super thanks from last week um and then a thank you to everybody that wished me a happy birthday yesterday i appreciate all of the messages the 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 cash apps the starbucks um gift cards that i got like i appreciate everything so thank you thank you thank you for all the love let's talk about lindy and miguel Lindy looked a mess tonight. That Parappa the Rapper hat stressed me out. Because why does she have it on? Nonetheless, let's go. So, they are packing up this baby, McGindy. Last week, I didn't talk about them because there was nothing to talk about. But they got a baby from the experts because that was their issue to talk about. So, they got they packed up this baby and they were sending the baby back. Um, they then go on a date to go axe throwing. And... Miguel is awful at it because he's throwing very lackadaisical with one arm. He's trying to be super macho, and I'm just going to throw it with one arm, whereas Lindy is using both arms and throwing it. So because she's using both arms and throwing it, she is able to do what? Actually stick the axe into the target. We got to think here, Miguel. So Miguel said that he's winning at life, so it's okay because his life is good. He's very happy with everything that's happening in life. I said, oh, yeah? Okay. So Lindy said that she would be surprised um, if there was any type of explosion between the two of them, but there is still a lot that could still happen. You know, the, the, the like running joke with them or running topic has been that uh, Miguel has not seen all of Lindy. Miguel has not seen Lindy at her up, down, round, around worse. So because of that, you know, this big explosion that we're waiting on to happen with her is still up for grabs. So Miguel said that um, he would tell her not to worry, um, said that if he were to tell her not to worry and not to have any doubts or anything going into like decision day, he would, but that would, that would be cheap. You know, that would kind of cheapen the situation. He said that he does not want to be in a loveless marriage. So Lindy said that even if we're, you know, going through a period and, we, we fall out of love, we can always get that back. Miguel said, absolutely not. I disagree. Um, so then it goes on to her being like, you're stressing me out, dude. I can't talk about this. You're stressing me out. One thing I've always like not liked about Lindy is the fact that Lindy cannot handle adult conversation and adult conflicts. So I don't know how she expects to be married and navigate through a healthy marriage because it seems like every single time Miguel wants to have a very real conversation about decision day or about some type of issue or just being a real ass adult and, and pointing out that life is just not going to be all peaches and cream all the time. She doesn't want to talk about it because it stresses her out. Lindy is childish. She's childish. And I, I for one, am sick of her. <laughs> I I hate talking about them more than I do Ben and Morgan. Um... So, Lindy feels like he's basically telling her um, that if she isn't catering to him the way that he wants or giving him the type of love that he needs, that he will leave. And she said it feels like a threat. He said, no, sweetheart, it's a promise. <laughs> now, he told her it's a reality. And I feel like that's, that's true. If I'm not getting loved the way that I need to be loved or love the way that I want to be loved in a marriage, why would I stay? And I feel like Lindy is a person who wants to be like, okay, we're married. We're going to stay married for get together forever and ever and ever and ever. And no matter... And no matter what you think about it or how you feel about it, that's just how it's just going to be. And it's kind of like, that's weird. <laughs> it's, it's a very childish way of, of thinking. 
So Miguel meets up with one of Lindy's friends and they talk about how Lindy gets hangry when um, she hasn't eaten. Miguel was like, I haven't seen that maybe because I'm always feeding her because every time we see Miguel, he is in the kitchen. In the kitchen, risk cooking like some stir fry, okay? So... They both agree that she's very easy to get along with, um, very easy to get along with most of the time. She's very fun. She's goofy. She's she's a good time. Um, but Miguel said he has seen some concerns, okay? Um, I know he's concerned about that parenting because he points out that, you know, she wasn't really hands-on with the little baby that she... Name McGindy. She said, Y'all could have called that baby Daryl. Why did it have to be McGindy? But she was she wasn't very hands-on with the fake baby. And he pointed out how angry she would get. He said that the baby was like kind of crying every two hours because you know what? The baby's hungry because their stomach is this big. And the baby said, Damn it, I want to eat too, just like you ate. So he noticed that she would get very, very angry. And there were nights where he, you know, had to cover and take care of everything because she, like, just couldn't handle it. And for him, he's very concerned about how negative she is. And we see a lot of scenes where she is negative. She nitpicks, like, um, their one-month anniversary when they were looking at the pictures, and she was pointing out negative aspects of it. So he wants her to learn how to process some of her negativity, um how to process not only her negativity, but just how to process um, what she's going through internally and not necessarily always feel like she has to spew it out or talk about it all the time. Because um, he said he doesn't want to feel like he has to censor himself so that he doesn't trigger her. And that's a very, very real thing. Nobody wants to, to have to feel like they have to censor themselves because they're walking on eggshells around somebody else it's not fair so the fact that miguel can't openly talk about decision day or have a conversation about certain things because it's gonna upset lindy is bullshit i don't care what anybody says that's bullshit and it's not fair to miguel it's not and i don't even like miguel but it's not fair to him so they meet up with Dr. Peppers and they talk about the issue with the baby. And Dr. Pe um, Lindy was saying how she couldn't handle the stress of the baby at all. And she said that Miguel had to, you know, watch the baby two nights in a row because she just couldn't take it. So y'all don't need no kids. Y'all don't need no kids then if you can't handle a Dow. So... Miguel said that she has a pattern of being negative and it is affecting him. He said it's unsustainable, unsustainable for them to operate like this in the long run. So then, uh, I'm sorry, they met with Pastor Cal, not Dr. Pepper. So then Lindy said that um, he has not yet seen her intense characteristics. And she keeps warning him about that and warning him about that and warning him about that. So Pastor Cal says, so what, 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 what have you seen? What has he seen you at? She said a 4.5. I said, that's a 4.5. You a lie. You a lie. The way that you freaked out about insurance saying that you was going to get hit by a car and then crash into a tree and roll down a hill and your leg was going to fall off. You a lie, Lindy. That was not a 4.5. And if that is a 4.5, then you act a complete and utter fool whenever you get the chance to. So she said that, oh, I'm ashy. Why y'all didn't tell me? So she said that, she has only been to a 10 once or twice. So Pastor Cal was like, oh, so you've seen her at her norm. And I kind of feel like if that's her norm, Miguel doesn't like it. Miguel doesn't like it. Because if that is her norm, anything above the way she behaved with the, the wanting to be on his insurance is not okay. So the fact that Pastor Cal was trying to make it seem like it would be okay, it wasn't okay the way that she behaved. And if that is her norm, I don't want to see her at like a six or a six and a half. But I guess we see it next week. Um, 
so they he tells her to stop you know kind of like stop kind of giving like a precursor to a, a blow up and just kind of you know let's try to deal with where we're going at now and I said Pastor Carol's been giving horrible horrible advice lately to them so then later when the couples were all hanging out together, Lindy was kind of nervous to say that things were going good with them. And Alexis was like, don't be, don't feel bad about that. If y'all are having issues, say that. That's good. But they are having issues. Lindy just doesn't want to acknowledge them because they don't talk about them because she doesn't allow Miguel to express himself. Remember, she told Miguel, if you're pulling away, don't even tell me, my guy. Keep it inside. But she doesn't keep any of her frustrations inside. So we see next week, I guess we get Lindy at like a six or seven, you know, if that's 4.5. Um, she looked like she goes batshit crazy. We see this woman laughing hysterically to laughing menacingly to cackling. And then we see her crying and sobbing and walking away because he doesn't want to hug. So let me know what you guys thought about tonight's episode and I will catch you guys next week.